My name is Eve and I am an architect and the BIM consultant at AG CAT. Our mission is building BIM together, which means that we align our clients' needs and develop solutions for continuous BIM acceleration. Our promise to clients is reducing BIM stress. We help to eliminate tasks that do not create value. Specific topics that the webinar will address include auto-generating truss floor framing using custom rules and templates, automating sheeting layouts, finding structural and engineering clashes, cutting and framing openings according to predefined rules, distributing joint connections, and other details using our configurations, preparing custom shop drawings and cut lists, and finally, export to any CNC machine and CAD CAM production line. So stay with me and you'll see it. And let's just jump right in into the live demonstration. And right here, I already have a Revit project open and a small house modeled. And I'm going to create a truss floor automatically for my model. First of all, I will use floor plus for creating a truss layout. Actually, floor plus, uh, some of you may know that it's created for creating joists and assemblies with shop drawings. Uh, so for, for basically creating timber floor frames. But also, we can distribute with floor plus symbolic layout lines that will indicate future trusses. So that is more auto automatic than if I would do that with the mod line, for example. But it's not necessary for creating truss floors, so later I will show you how to create it using a simple model line. But now I will create it using Floor Plus. So before uh, using the tool, of course, you have to load families and schedules. So I already done that and the tool automatically loads all structural framing, structural connection elements as well that is used together with the software. And then we make the floor link. So in the floor link, I already said that I want to add this truss layout configuration. And we can take a look what is said right here. So I have my truss layout configuration right here. And what is the main difference between creating a uh, timber floor framing and this truss layout is that the family that I'm using is not an actual uh, joist, but it's a truss layout ACES. So then later I will be able to generate trusses where those layout pieces are. So the framing of this floor will be uh, relatively simple, but then I will modify it to meet my complex uh, um, desire of this frame. So now uh, in the configuration settings, I added this truss layout line. Uh, also, I added it right here as the common joist. For the rim joist, I actually added actual uh, structural framing elements. We will see them after I frame my wall. And also, I added elements for framing my opening. So also, I added uh, these truss layout lines. And I also added headers. Yeah, so when you make any changes, and you can make any type of changes right here. So uh, you can create edge joists, bridging, logging, and logging, and so on. But we will see all of that uh, when I will modify my floor. OK, so when we make any changes, we just save it. And then we will be able to use it in the future. So these configurations can be created only one time. And then they can even be put on a server. So all of your colleagues would have an access to them and use them. So they can be created only one time. And when I made the modifications, I saved them. And I just showed you that in the floor link, I added this configuration. And that's it. Now I can just click on Frame Floor. And now the tool is distributing those layout lines. Yeah, and you can see that these actual framing elements were added right here where I predefined them and right here. And everywhere else I have these layout lines. And now I can modify my layout of this floor because I want it to be more complex. So for that, I will turn on this menu and I actually want to delete this element because I, I will add additional uh, additional bridging, blocking, and nodding right here. Okay, so I removed it. And now I will modify my floor frame. 
So what will I do first? I will remove this edge. Yeah, no element will be added right here. And also, instead of it, I will add a secondary joist system between my bridging, nogging, and blocking. So first of all, I will add the bridging, nogging, and blocking. Yeah, this is the truss layout line that will be added. I will add it uh, by two rules. So first of all, I will add it from the base, and this will be the offset. I will add 12 elements, and from the other end as well. Okay, this is the spacing, and let's say I'm done. Uh, with the bridging, nogging, and blogging, and now, as I mentioned, I want to add secondary stat system. Yeah, okay, and I think I am done. Yeah, now we'll see the changes applied right here, and yeah, instead of that one continuous uh, connection layout line and connection, I added these secondary ones, and I also added bridging, nogging, and blocking. Okay, and what else I want to modify is I want to modify the opening framing. I want to add more elements right here. Modify opening framing, okay. And I will add king joists. Well, they're not actually joists, as I mentioned. They will be these layout lines, okay. And everything seems to be okay here. And also what I'm going to do is I want to add... Uh, lower trusses right here, not as high as everywhere in my uh, in my floor in my bathroom floor. Uh, I want to for them to be lower, so uh, I will need to split these layout lines because I want I will need uh, to have a different truss type right here, different uh, heat truss type. So now I will add additional bridging, nogging, and blocking between these layout lines and this time I will not add a truss layout line but I will add a supporting beam for my trusses for my future trusses and yes it's okay and um, I will select the line based element so it will, this wall right here will act as a support for my beam and I will split the studs so split these layout lines with my beam that I'm adding okay and it will be added right here above this bathroom wall. And as you can see, the beam is added. Yeah, and also it split these layout lines. So now we'll be able to add different trusses right here. And also I'll do the same under this bathroom floor. I will add an additional element right here as well. Yes, the same beam. I will split the layout lines with this element and I will select line based elements. So this time I'll select this wall to act as a support for my beam. Oh, and I think I forgot to uncheck one tick mark, but I'm not sure. Oh, no, I didn't. Everything is okay. And yeah, as you can see now, I will be able to have separate trusses for my bathroom floor. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend these metal beams a little, just using standard Revit functionality. Yeah, and now everything is correct. Uh, so I think actually that I'm done playing with my layout and now I can actually generate the trusses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Truss Plus RT tool right here and I'm going to start creating those trusses. So first of all, of course, we have to load floor truss types and the tool will load all the structural framing elements and structural trusses that are necessary for creating these frames. And now I can start generating them. So first of all, uh, these trusses right here uh, will have to have an opening for my MEP depth element. So I will select First of all, all of them, and I will use insert roof truss by selected model line. And I'll choose this truss type with an opening included. Okay, 
Yes, and the tresses are generated and you can see that they have an opening in them. It's right here in these tresses and it's somewhere over here in these tresses and somewhere over here in these. And uh, yeah, they are not correct yet. They're not adjusted by the MEP element. So I will use this functionality which will let me to adjust the opening. So I will use set fortress opening position, select the deck. I can also choose the opening width and that's it. Now the opening is being adjusted by the depth element in my floor. Yeah, and you can see now it's correct. Now the duct is going directly through the openings and we can continue to generating tresses. So I will go to first floor maybe. It's uh, more comfortable to select the layout lines. In this view and I will select these uh, continuous elements that are left and I will also generate the same type of tresses for them uh, just without the opening yeah I have one with the opening and one without so I will generate these yeah okay and they're generated and also for these I will select them as well, and also these, and again I will generate a different type of dress for them, so I'll choose this one, yes, and I think they're already generated, yeah, everything's looking good so far, so now, and now I can change the type of these tresses because I said that uh, for my bathroom floor I want them to be lower so I will just edit this instance parameter right here yeah and there we go I have lower tresses for my bathroom floor okay and also in this edge, I will generate gable entrances. Yeah, this one. Yes. Gable entrances are added right here. And uh, this side of the floor is left. So again, I will go to the first level. Um, I will select these layout lines right here. And I will generate jack tresses for this situation okay okay and uh, we can go to the 3d view and take a look yeah, and everything is looking is looking good except that this element is not aligned you see it's not it's not correct yet so what I can do is I can select these tresses And I can check this tick mark, align, drop chord, and then they will be aligned. Yeah, you see? Now they are correct. Okay, and last tresses left, these gable and tresses, so I will select these model lines, these layout lines, and generate gable and tresses in these places. Yes, and they are done, I think. Yeah, and yeah, they are created, they are added. Very good. Now what's left is the beams. Yeah, well, Use this family that is loaded with the software, and I will add these beams right here. This one, and also yeah, it's okay here, and also 
Uh, what's now? What now? I want to add additional uh, supporting elements right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these two elements and increase their height to meet the height of these tresses, and I will add additional supporting elements right here using the floor plus. So I will use add additional bridge and mounting and blocking. Select these two elements and. I will select a ridge joist, OK, I will cut the additional element, OK, the offset will be like this, I think everything is, I think everything is correct, yeah, I moved to that accidentally, yeah, and this is good, and I also want to do the same in this location right here, add additional bridging, mounting, and blocking between these two elements. Everything is correct. Yeah, and it's added as well. Okay, so I am I think I'm done with my tresses, and now what I can do is I can add the details. And you can add details, of course, by a number of different ways, and right now we'll be using a functionality from the floor plus right here we can have various detail configurations we can add any kinds of elements and save them by our own name in the configuration and of course you can create these configurations only one time and then use them in the future so we have this configuration for my trust layout and I just can use now add details select an element from my from my floor and the details are added and we can see them right here these are my details and also I can see it right here so again we can create it we can add them by all kinds of different configurations that depends on us and now when the details are added I'm ready to split the sheeting and for sheeting also there's sheeting configuration so we can create configurations for splitting the sheeting from uh, adding offsets from openings and then connections and so on and the layout of the sheeting all kinds of uh, uh, settings we can configure there and then we can split it so before that also I will add a opening element uh, right here that will cut uh, the sheeting where my bathroom floor is because for my bathroom bathroom floor you'll see that I want to you're gonna see uh, how I will split the tiles okay so maybe I'll add it here and I'll adjust this opening and it's not cutting an actual opening in my truss I don't want that it's only cutting the opening in where the sheeting should be because I'm gonna add a different sheeting here so now I will split the sheeting and paneling parts, click on this floor, and now the sheeting is being split. Yeah, and this the sheeting is split, it's just that I cannot see it yet because it's created as Revit parts. So I will go to my view that I created for the sheeting. You can see that the parts are turned on right here, and the sheeting is split. But it's not split for my bathroom floor because I added a cook opening right here. So now I, I'm actually using a different configuration for my bathroom floor because I want to create tiles for it. So I will select also split sheeting and paneling parts and it will be split by a different configuration. And you can see that I've just created bathroom tiles automatically, even with the gap. Yeah, so that is how we can split the sheeting for our floors and I also have interior sheeting split. I mean in the bottom of the floor and on the top of my floor. And yeah, that is the basic workflow for creating the frames. And now when it's created, we can create shop drawings or export the frames, uh, the trusses to CNC machines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort all, all these elements. So with tresses, I will sort tresses now. And now the element is automatically, automatically sorting all these tresses. Yeah, and we can see, we will be able to see the values. And also I will sort structural numbers. Yeah, and if I would 
select an element of the truss in the properties, we would see that these values were just written in automatically. Yeah, and now it would be enough for the shop drawings, but I also want to export them to CNC machines. So I will also take my sort mark, and it's a very powerful tool for renumbering Revit elements, and I will use it for writing CNC part name and part number for my structural framing elements. Yeah, so I'm choosing the category which I want to renumber and the parameter name that I want to write values in. So I chose CNC uh, part name. Yeah, now I'm choosing the configuration. So again, they can be saved and used. So I can group uh, my elements by various uh, criteria, also filter, number, and so on. And then create the sort mark. OK. Now the elements are being uh, sorted automatically. And as you can see, in just uh, one second, uh, 1,475 elements, uh, structural framing elements, have now have a CNC parking parameter filled in. Also, I'll do the same for other parameters. So again, element numbering. So that would take a lot of time to do manually, as you can probably imagine. Structural framing, again. Yeah, this time we'll choose part number. Again, I have already created a configuration, so I don't have to do anything again. Okay. And now, in a couple of seconds, yeah, again, 1,475 elements now have CNC part number and part name parameters written in. Yeah, so if I would select any element from this floor, yeah, I would find CNC part number and CNC part name parameters filled in. And I'm ready to export my truss to a CNC file. So for that, I will use our Handiger CNC exporter. And these can be created for a number of different machines. But in this, for this example, I will show you on a Handiger. And I will choose Export Truss to CNC. I'll select any truss from my floor. Yeah, and that's it. Now it's exported. So I can find it where my project lies. Uh, right here, I can see by the time. This is the file that I just exported, a BBX file. OK, yeah, and we can see the trust members right here. They're cut, they're numbered, the positions are marked. Yeah, and they're all right here. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create shop drawings. So that is also very simple. For the shop drawings, again, we have our shop drawing configuration where we can predefine what views do we want to create and what schedules do we want to create. Then we just save our configuration by our own name and use it in the future project again. Okay, also I can add a sheet to be created. And that's it. Now I can just use create assembly from truss, select any truss. I can see my truss. This is the, I will, I will move all of these right now so you could see better. Yeah, you can see the schedule material takeoff with material volume, also the part list and the front elevation where all elements are tagged automatically. Uh, that's why we use the sort mark and the truss. Uh, so we sorted all these trusses, so now they're automatically tagged. And they're also automatically dimensioned. This is the opening for the duct. And I also have a sheet where I can compose all my schedules and drawings. And then later, I can set the sheet as a template, and all other sheets for all trusses will be created automatically by this sheet that I set as a template. 
And also, what I want to show you is, as I mentioned, you don't have to use Floor Plus for creating the truss layout. For example, if you don't need to create a joist with Floor Plus, you may not have it, and you also can create these layouts not with Floor Plus, but just with Model Line. So very quickly, I will demonstrate you that. So I will take a Model Line, and let's say that this, this line indicates my floor truss that I want to generate. So I will click on this model line and use insert truss and I will choose the same type as I used for my, for my truss floor framing. And you'll see that the truss will be generated just as good. Yeah, it's here. And now I can array it. So I will I will select the truss and I will use these functions. So I will array this truss to the left. Okay, this will be the spacing. I will add, let's say, five elements. Okay. And now this truss is being arrayed. So we can very easily do that with model lines as well. Yeah, and everything is okay. And now let's say I want to modify this layout. So I'm going to turn out the wireframe view so I could see the model line. And let's say, uh, my floor was moved and I want to move all my trusses. So I will move my model line, let's see here, and even I will make it longer. And let's see what happens now. I will go back to shaded view, I'll click on this truss and use update floor truss. And you'll see how it will be updated by this model line that was moved and lengthened, yeah? Okay, and also, I can do the same for these elements. Now they will be updated by the truss that they were arrayed from. So they will be also moved and lengthened automatically, yeah? So you see how you don't have to use floor truss for creating the layout, it's just, of course, faster and uh, more comfortable, but you can do the same with model lines and trust plus RT. Okay, so uh, I think I'm done showing my live demonstration. Don't run away. I will take a look at your questions. Uh, right now, I just want to mention that I encourage you to download the trials and try the tools for yourself. And all AGCAD developed Autodesk Revit add-ons and BIM solutions are accessible through tools for BIM Dog dashboard, a separate interactive window in Revit that works like the project browser or properties window. So you'll just go to agcad.com, you download the tools for BIM Dog, uh, select a version of course, and that's it. You will have the dog, and from there you will uh, download trials for our wood framing software. So thank you everyone who attended this webinar. I hope you found out something new. It was interesting and beneficial for you. Um, yeah, let me know uh, if you have any questions or uh, any feedback that you may have. Have a nice day or a nice evening and I hope to see you in the future. Goodbye.